Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and you uh, have stumbled upon my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I make videos pertaining uh, particularly to uh, HIV AIDS education and outreach. Uh, uh, you'll remember my last video uh, I shared my personal story. Um, so hopefully that you know that uh, it could be potentially someone you know, someone you're friends with, um, someone you're related to uh, that is affected by uh, this thing called HIV or AIDS. And so uh, I'm going to provide you with some information uh, and uh, if you have any comments or questions or maybe you have something uh, that you want answered uh, you can either message me privately or, or you can comment below and I will do my best to um, get you the answer that you seek. Um, thank you for watching uh, my videos and if you would like the uh, the video or the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so let's just dive right into this thing uh, and, and let's answer some questions uh, as we start looking at what HIV and AIDS is and what it's not and how you can get it and how you won't get it. So these are a few of the questions. Um, like I said, thank you for taking the time. Uh, so let's look at the history uh, real quickly about HIV AIDS. As you may have heard, uh, June 5th, uh, 1981, was the first reported case of a mysterious illness. Uh, there was not a name yet for it, uh, and we would later know that it is the HIV AIDS. Here, here's the difference. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. It's just a line in the sand that when you cross this threshold, you are now considered uh, to have AIDS. Okay, so. Uh, what is that threshold? The threshold is uh, the CD4 count or T cell count to drop below 200 or if a patient acquires an opportunistic infection such as pneumonia, particular types of cancer, uh, things that normally a person with a healthy immune system uh, would be able to fight off and fend off. Uh, unfortunately due to the HIV virus uh, it makes these patients particularly more uh, uh, vulnerable to these opportunistic infections. Now, once a patient crosses over okay, uh, into AIDS, uh, that's not the end of the road, right? They can get healthy again. Uh, and thanks to many of the great medicines that we have, uh, you know, they can uh, uh, build up that CD4 uh, T cell count again. Uh, and get the viral load down to an undetectable level. What's a viral load? A viral load is how many copies of the HIV uh, virus uh, is in your system. Okay, and so whenever a person first uh, gets infected uh, with HIV, uh, that viral load will spike, it goes up. Uh, consequently, the, C, the T, uh, T cells, CD4 count, goes down. Um, so I, I wanted to clear that up. I had a question about that this week. Um, another question I had was, you know, I, I, how uh, is this thing spread? Okay. And there was a lot of fear uh, back when this first came into existence in the 80s. Uh, uh, you know, particularly I'm thinking of uh, Ryan White uh, when he wasn't allowed to go to school because they didn't know how this thing was spread. And, and, and so I had a particular person ask me uh, this week, hey, Aaron, uh, how is it spread? And thank you for that question. Um, I would, you know, I, I encourage you to ask questions because knowledge truly is power. So we know that HIV uh, is spread primarily uh, through sexual intercourse. It's also spread from mother to child, uh, particularly during childbirth. Um, it can be caused by oral sex, although the the data is not there to fully support whether it's. Uh, it, you know, it's low, but it's not zero. So there, there's still a minute chance. Uh, so you should always use safe sex methods. Uh, it is not spread through light kissing. Um, and, and so, you know, another way is uh, uh, drug use, uh, sharing of needles. Um, so these are the ways that we know that the HIV virus is spread. You're not going to get HIV from casual contact. You're not going to get HIV from a toilet seat. Uh, you're not, you know, these are not the ways it's spread. 
So if you have a friend or you know somebody or loved one that uh, is uh, positive with the HIV virus, you don't have to treat them any differently. Uh, and really, uh, the, the only time that uh, real you know, precautions have to be taken uh, is if you are you know, exposed to uh, 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 blood or, or other bodily fluids. So that would be primarily a healthcare worker or a sexual partner. Okay, so uh, it, since 1981, uh, 1 1.7 million Americans have been infected with HIV, uh, and more than 617,000 uh, have died from AIDS-related causes. That's just in the United States. So this thing is still very much a pandemic. Okay, uh, if we look on a global scale, since HIV uh, AIDS epidemic has begun. Uh, 60 million people have contracted HIV, uh, with 25 million dying from AIDS-related causes. So, uh, you know, another thing that's very uh, disturbing, and, and, and I make these videos because I want everyone to go out and get tested, uh, is that 21% of those that are infected um, remain undiagnosed. So here I wanted to show you something. Uh, this is actually from Washington University's Infectious Disease Clinic, um, and that's located at 4570 Children's Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63110. I'll put all this information at the end of the video. Uh, but this is just an OraQuick Advanced uh, VIH 1 2 test. So, uh, uh, HIV 1, HIV 2, one's an African strain, one's uh, not an African strain. Uh, it's simple. Uh, it takes just 20 minutes, uh, it's 99% accurate, and it's FDA approved uh, versatile rapid testing uh, that works with either oral fluid or blood. So if you're scared of uh, getting your finger pricked or getting uh, blood drawn, uh, certainly this would be an option for you. Uh, and I will put on a, uh, a link uh, for this uh, because this is certainly something that's very important. Some other things that we have here in St. Louis, uh, I'm very fortunate uh, to, to be living in a city that has a lot of resources um, for those that are living with HIV and certainly AIDS. And, and I found this this morning. Uh, this is from uh, St. Louis Effort for AIDS, and it said, HIV health is possible. Long-term survival and thriving can be learned, and that's true. So this particular uh, uh, card is for life. It's a program designed specifically for gay and bisexual men living with HIV AIDS um, and you know, enjoy good food good company while learning techniques to increase your social physical and mental health here's the thing you can't your life does not end it does not end with your diagnosis if you keep going okay uh, your diagnosis is simply a diagnosis okay uh, you have a support network you may not think you do but you have a support network out there that, that wants to support you, uh, someone. And, and, and I found I've been very fortunate with um, uh, this past weekend. I, I uh, had my birthday, uh, and I uh, got to spend my birthday with an amazing group of people who all know I'm positive. Uh, they've obviously seen the YouTube video. They've seen Facebook. They've seen other things. And I'm very candid. I'm very honest about it uh, because I think we have to. You know, you can either, once you are uh, diagnosed, um, feel sorry for yourself, and that's a natural reaction. I think uh, it's very valid uh, to kind of have a, a life crisis and to wonder what's going to go on, and, uh, but you can't stay in that mode. You have to pick yourself up, educate yourself, uh, and uh, continue on with life because you have a long life ahead of you. And, uh, and so that's, that's the message I want to get across. It's, it's important that we know that every nine and a half minutes, someone uh, is, is infected with HIV. So in the time of this video, one person has become infected. Um, you know, so that's, these, these, these statistics are, are alarming. All these statistics that I am reading you uh, come from the uh, AIDS life cycle. Uh, it's a 585-mile bike ride that I'm pour, uh, riding in uh, next June 3rd through 9th. 
Uh, it starts out in San Francisco and it ends in L.A. Anyone is invited to ride with me. Uh, myself and uh, Earl Jones are riding in that. And, and we ride in it because uh, we're remembering those that we've lost through the years and remembering those that we're currently fighting for. And uh, in the time span that this has been around, uh, which this will be the 11th year, uh, the AIDS life cycle has um, raised over $70 million. This past year, they had over 3,000 riders, uh, and they raised over $12 million. So that's really great. All that money goes towards AIDS research. So if you want to learn more about that, I will put a link on that uh, at the end of this video. Uh, and that is just AIDSLifeCycle.org. Uh, uh, if you want to donate, uh, because uh, all donations are, are accepted, certainly, you just go to the website. You're going to see a donate button. Uh, and then once that pops up, you will be given an opportunity to donate online. You search for a participant uh, or a team. So you just type in my name, Aaron Laxton or Earl Jones. Um, and that goes straight to the AIDS life cycle. I would challenge you today. Um, maybe you don't know what to do. Maybe you want to do something. Uh, maybe you can spare five dollars, ten dollars, twenty-five dollars. Uh, so just go online and make that donation. It's uh, fully tax deductible, uh, and uh, it will be certainly going for a good cause. Uh, you can come out to uh, one of our many fundraisers that we have, uh, and that would, uh, you know, just say hi to me. Uh, if you know me, if you've seen me around, you know I'm a very uh, extroverted person, and I talk to everybody, and I want to share. Uh, my experiences, uh, my victories, and some of my failures. That's how we learn. We, we teach each other. Uh, so I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If uh, you have any questions, uh, any topics particularly that you would want me to cover, um, comment on the bottom. Uh, also, uh, subscribe to uh, my channel. The box is going to be right here, so to click on that. And then, uh, you know, I'll have some different links. You can go to my Facebook. You can go to Tumblr. You can go to Twitter. Uh, any way you want to connect to me, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, you know, we're in this together. And until there's a cure, uh, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep educating. Um, as I learn, I will help teach others. Um, as always, uh, you know, I want to stress the importance of using uh, safe s sex methods. Uh, you know, uh, you're going to be going out there and you're going to be having a good time. But, you know, you don't want to, uh, for just a short amount of time, uh, face a lifetime of challenge that, that comes with a diagnosis. So a condom certainly can uh, fix that. But one thing you have to be careful about is whenever you're using uh, a lubricant, they have water base and they have silicone. This is silicone. Uh, silicone is not good with latex. It tears it down. Uh, so, you know, just even if you're using safe sex methods, you have to know how to properly employ them. You know, a, a condom only lasts for so long, and then you have to change it out. Uh, and so it, I just want to make sure everyone out there, uh, if you're having a good time, keep to having your good time, but do it safely. And everything you do now, you can do uh, safely. Uh, and uh, you still uh, can enjoy life and certainly enjoy a sex life, but use safe sex methods. So until my next video, uh, I wish you all well, wherever you're doing, or wherever you're going, whatever you're doing. Um, be sure to contact me, send me a message, uh, look me up online, and uh, uh, also please let me know if there's a topic that you would like me to cover. Uh, if you want uh, to have some, uh, you know, more information uh, on a particular subject, you can message me offline. I'll either do a video or I can just contact you one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and I'll be more than glad to do that. So until next time, be safe out there. Talk to you later.